Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. EA has us scratching our heads and asking, what in the world are they thinking? After a couple pieces of content that were dropped yesterday on Sunday in FC25, and it's also starting to work its way to the market, as content yesterday was pretty mid, so has the market kind of reacted to this content. Now, I'm investing some coins because I'm hoping for a bit of a market rise today, but we got to talk about what a Monday could spice up on FC25 after yesterday and even this weekend in general really wasn't that fantastic in some areas. We'll talk about it, guys, in today's video. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe if you are new. Now, let's talk about yesterday's content. That's the first stuff that we absolutely have to go over because we got one of the SBCs that we were waiting on, guys. The Team, the Dream Sterling. We had some hopes for this card that EA would maybe upgrade him in different ways to make a card whose gold card is definitely not usable anymore. Make him usable and fun, unique body type in game. Raheem Sterling has had some great cards in the past, but unfortunately, EA did not upgrade this card enough for our liking. The stats are honestly not terrible. It's the other areas of the card. He did not get a weak foot boost. He is four star, three star. He can play striker. That's one thing they added to this card that his gold card does not have is a striker position change. Left mid, right mid, and left wing as well. And the stat boost isn't bad, honestly. If you take a look at his, this card compared to his gold, he got plus five pace, seven shooting, five pass, five defense, and ten physical along with three dribbling it's not terrible from an 81 to an 86 it's just lacking a play style plus probably a cheaper price and some different roles he did not get any role additions in terms of a role plus or a role plus plus on this card this this was a really good opportunity for ea to drop a fun player even if they weren't going to decrease the price i think the card did not get upgraded enough to match what they're asking for for this SBC. Now, he does have some good play styles just on his base gold card with the ones that you see here. Very usable. And the price is, it's bearable in a sense, but still for the upgrade, I don't think 266,000 coins, as you can tell, I'm not the only one who thinks this, 2,700 downvotes on the player card itself and 1,000 downvotes on the SBC for the price. I think this SBC just isn't upgraded enough, guys. That's kind of my problem. I mean, look at this. The Rashford Evo that is kind of taking this game by storm. I'm doing this Evo right now. 50,000 coins for this Magic Knights Rashford Evo card. Of course, maybe you have to go buy the gold, which is 20,000 coins as well. So 70,000 coins plus a few games for this Rashford card is way less than 260K for Sterling. It has a playstyle plus, of course, with power shot plus. And honestly, five star skills with the same weak foot, that is a better card than Raheem the Dream Sterling, with still potentially Evo in the future, probably not for a while. But I would take this Rashford over the Sterling any day of the week. And it really just cements right now the best SBCs to be completing on this game are probably the Alex Morgan. Like you think about this Raheem Sterling card, there's plenty of other cards that look kind of like this in terms of play styles, in terms of rating, in terms of the weak foot and skill moves. There's not a lot of cards that look like Alex Morgan with the finesse plus the other play styles that she has. And sure, if you look at these two, you're like, nah, Nate, Alex Morgan is way more expensive. Well, Alex Morgan has the same exact SBC requirements as Sterling, except she has one 87 rated squad added on the end of it, which makes this SBC to me look way more like better value and craftable at the moment and where I want to put my fodder over this Raheem Sterling. I would even say that Ma Mallory Swanson SBC is better than the Raheem Sterling card personally. Now, I know it's Sterling, so if you're a Arsenal fan or English, you maybe just get this one done for the emotional reasons. Totally understand that. He is good in game. His dribbling is going to be pretty good. I actually played against one of his cards in foot champs yesterday. Wouldn't say that it shocked me or anything like that, but I think we're just a little let down by this, especially, you know, the leakers maybe have a bit of a problem in this, and the expectations of the community were set pretty high for a Raheem Sterling card, and of course, EA really did not feel delivered on this SBC. Now, in SBCs yesterday as well, we had the Total Rush Challenge 2, and I've already completed it. You should too. It's really, really easy to get done. I think you only have to turn in five players, all from the same nation that's actually causing some players in price to go up. Some of the gold left back, center back, and right back players, even goalkeepers from the top nine nations and top five leagues, because you need a little bit of chemistry with all players being from the same nation, you're seeing some of those player prices go up. Even though it's a very cheap SBC, maybe just check your club. I think French left backs were selling for over 4,000 coins, and then a I bought an Argentinian keeper for 550 on Snipe, but I think that was even a bit of a deal. So check your clubs for those top nation 
uh, defenders because that's what you need for that very simple SPC. Now, the other part of content yesterday is really the big one that's got us honestly asking after thinking about it and seeing this content now for a few hours like, what in the world is this Evo? At a face value, it looks good. I like the idea. Great Guti, right? We've had this with the Cannon. We've had this with Dazzling Dribbler. And some of the other um, evolutions that we've had have kind of been based around a hero or an icon added to the game this year. This is all about Guti, right? You get a really good upgrade from this. You get a solid shooting boost. You get pinged pass. You get a dribbling boost as well. Passing and physical. Really big dribbling and defending boost, to be honest. You get incisive pass as well and finesse shot and playmaker plus plus roll it's a really good evo in terms of the boost you can see the upgrades here man and especially some of the cards that come out of it like this jolenton card is probably the most popular it's a holet gang jolenton with this the high physical that he already has but like look at this card you got finesse incisive and pinged and bruiser intercept press proven relentless that's a really, really good card. And then, of course, you give him Playmaker++, plus plus, which would be added onto his card as well. That is a really, really solid card. The Enzo Fernandez looks decent. Gravenberch looks okay. Uh, the Loftus Cheek, which if you did the first Evo for Loftus Cheek, I think you're happy. The Box to Box and Intro to Stat Limits one, because that one, in my opinion, is better than this one, especially for the 65,000 coin price. Now, again, that's the hang-up, right? This is a nice Evo. It's paid for a reason. It gives out some big boosts. It's 65,000 coins. That is the first problem. The price is just too steep, guys. When I look at my club and see some of the players in here, yeah, sure, I have the Enzo Fernandez. Would I want to complete this for 65,000 coins? Maybe I'd think about it. Maybe if there was a player that I really wanted from one of my favorite clubs, this Enzo Fernandez for 65K, would he be that much on the market? Probably not. That's the way that I like to look at it all the time. Maybe this Ricky Puj, he looks pretty decent as well. You know, the 65K price point, we could get past that if it was just the price point that's the problem. But then you look at the requirements. This is where it's like astonishing. I couldn't even believe my eyes when I looked in this yesterday. Win six matches in the live Ultimate Team Friendly EVO Arena. That's level one. Level two is win eight matches in the EVO Arena. And then level three is win 10. You have to win 24 matches in the EVO Arena live foot friendly mode to get this evolution done. That is an insane amount of games. And the thing is, I mean, in that mode right now, a lot of people are probably not playing gold and gold, but I think that's the reason why this was as high as it is in terms of the games played and the matches required to get this evolution done because in those friendlies, a lot of people are doing gold and gold. That's one way that you could get through this quicker. I, I don't think this is really a good option for EA to turn in this many games inside of the friendly game mode. Honestly, I'm fine with the rivals Russian squad battles combination and maybe a few of these could be done in uh, You know friendlies, but I don't know that number of games is really crazy to go alongside with the price of this SBC It's I'm not touching this now. No way I'm gonna play that many games for this upgrade Especially if there's not an emotional player that I want to get done now in the future if there's like an Evo chain that involves this one you know, maybe would undertake it but man, that's just so much of a grind for a card that's probably not the most worth the coins and the grind that it's going to take. Now, there's two ways. We talk about this with Evos a lot. We always look at the price. We look at the upgrades. We look at how many games you have to play because it's usually never that much. But there's kind of two ways that I think EA control Evos, right? They control it with the cost of entry. Paid versus unpaid. How much is the price if it's a paid Evo, right? Usually the paid Evos have bigger upgrades, right? This Ruben Loftus Cheek, free all the way around. Intro to stat limits and then into the box to box one. Nice upgrade, but it wasn't too much of a grind and it wasn't that much of an upgrade. It was just a solid upgrade. Now, the second way they can control Evos is the game requirements, which is what we're really noticing with this new Evo is crazy high, right? And it's way abnormal. I honestly think that both of these being as steep as they are for one Evo honestly just makes me not want to do this Evo at all. So I think that's really all there is to this, guys. We're just shocked that EA is requiring us to pay 65K for this, but then also do the number of games that it is. Even the FC point value doesn't make sense. It's 15,000 coins more than the Canon Evolution, but it's uh, 500 or 450 FC points more. So that really doesn't equal out in terms of the equation of coins, the FC points as well, at least in my opinion. So I don't know. That Evo just kind of seems like 
an anomaly yesterday. That's just an absolutely wild one that I personally don't think I will be completing just because of the price and the requirement there. Now, other things that did happen yesterday, we had the mini release, the first mini release actually of FC25 with Daily Blend, Dovbik, Bernstein, and Dello. If you actually want to look at something pretty funny, this Bernstein card is actually not far off as a discard priced left wing, not far off of the Raheem Sterling, who's 260k, of course. They're very similar in terms of stats and skill move weak foot and all that. But I want to look at this Dalo card. A lot of people are really excited about this version as a right back. He looks very good. He actually got a even sizable boost over the Evo version of his card. I believe he's right around 300,000 coins at the moment. Yeah, still chilling right around 300,000 coins. He is not rare on the market. He is very supplied even without really promo packs yesterday. Sure, there's promo packs in the store, uh, but there wasn't a lot of them open compared to how many there were on Friday for sure. I'm sure some of the supplies coming in through that trade will pack SBC and then weekend league rewards too. But this is a really, really good right back. Of course, he can play left back as well. And he's got the roles in both positions, wing back in both of them. Great um, passing of long ball and whipped pass plus. He's got great play styles in total. It's a really nice card. Really, really, really nice card. But the issue is he's very, very packable, it seems, and very supplied on the market. So I'm not going to be buying him. Sometimes what we look for in the mini releases is cards getting low on like late Sunday night, early Monday morning for a rise into Monday. That could happen for him today because honestly, he is very hype. We, of course, got Malagusto. We've got Trent as very new and just hype right backs in the Premier League as well. And of course, you have Delos Evo. So people may not see that as big of enough an upgrade to go out and pay the 300K for his card. I'm going to stay away from that one today, but it could be a good trade if you want to risk it. Just keep an eye on that. Also, I want to shout out this Artem Dovbik card. This guy might end up being a cheap beast. If you're going for a aerial type of meta, he's got power header, quick step, aerial, technical, and finesse shot, and he's got a four-star weak foot. Not a bad card. He's also got Poacher Plus. Honestly, for like a really, really cheap Serie A striker, this might be a fun card to try out. I know a lot of us have Taram at the moment, but I, I think that card deserves a shout-out because, honestly, pretty good boost there from EA on Dovbik. So that was the content yesterday. Kind of lackluster, right? Now, as I just sold a card, which is super nice, sold a friend Pong. If you look at the market as a whole, yesterday was not a crazy day on the market either. Sure, we did make a lot of coins yesterday. I ended up making over like 200,000 coins from the cards that we bought for after squad battle rewards flipping. You're like, Nate, how is the market just kind of mid if you made 200k? Well, the market only went up in some specific areas. Some of the mid to top tier goals moved a little bit. Heroes and icons move the most, and then out of pack specials. But a lot of the rest of the market, like golds, like we see after rivals rewards, like a lot of golds are flying, right? Every single week, really didn't do that well. This is the index 100 overall. As you're starting to see, people are really getting out of gold cards from their teams and moving on from those as we continue to see huge price drop offs from some of these players that even we thought were super meta and still usable in teams in the last week. Look at Bremer. Bremer's 49,000 coins after he was 76K on Friday. He's now 49K. Sure, could go up a little bit today, you know, in price. I mean, yesterday he went from 55K up to 59. That's not that big of a rise, but a really big drop for a guy like Bremer. As you look at the index overall, you can see here too, Saturday into content, we rose, right? We had a little bit of a dip. And then into the nighttime, we dipped before squad battle rewards, and we did have a decent rise. The market went from 59 points on the index to almost 62. But then, since then, it's just been kind of slow and a little bit of a drop. I do believe, though, there will be some prices that move upwards today. I just think, once again, guys, we got to be very, very careful with gold cards. Konate's 5.9K. What a drop. Nico Williams is 59,000 coins. What a drop for this card, too, who, you know, was still 80K on the weekend after his SBC was released. Gold cards are headed absolutely into the bin. There are just more and more examples of that all the time. Now, as I will say, there were some good movements yesterday. It was the heroes, it was the icons, and some of these total rush cards have some good fluctuations, too. Um, but they're hard to time, and it's kind of hard as well because a lot of them aren't swinging enough in terms of price to make a lot of profit off of. I bought a De Young yesterday. If you guys watched the second channel, we were I bought a De Young to try to flip. He really just didn't get rare enough, so I took a bit of a tax loss here, and he's still around the same price. Now, one thing I will say is I do believe a few of these cards, as I purchased a sure many, I do believe some of these cards could actually go back up today into Monday because 
People are going to be going trying cards out from this promo team. There's big name players inside of it. So I picked up a shoe many for 575. It was a bit of a snipe and an undercut. I could actually see his price going up a little bit today. Like Ronaldo, who we bought for 1.6, sold him for 1.7. He was down as low as 1.5 yesterday. And he still is in that 1.5 million coin range. Kevin De Bruyne is still down. I do believe that some of these promo cards, since there's just a lot of people that will want to try them out, they could have some movements positively today, but I don't know. Part of me also does not want to risk it a ton at the moment, even though these cards are rare. And these are usually the types of cards that I enjoy trading with the most. I just kind of want to be careful at the same time too. So the thing that makes me think these cards could actually move up a decent amount today is because people are going to get those last weekly rewards, those last coins. And I don't really expect a lot of the market to drop that much today, to be fair, just because what else is going to make the content uh, or what, what content today is going to make the market drop, right? It's not like we have a reward set that is going to bring a whole bunch of supply. Maybe a little bit of it's coming in. But again, with weekly, you get a lot of coins. So I do believe you could see the market rise up a little bit today. And I would watch those cards if you want more of a risky flip. If you want a safer flip, it's definitely the icons and it's definitely the heroes for all of that. Because again, these cards continue to just slowly go up in price. Sure, they have their fluctuations. But if you watch the footman graphs, you can absolutely make some informed 710 for Kelly Smith. I can't turn that down. That's an insane price. It's just stuff like that, right? That card sells for 770, 780 uh, at multiple different times of the day. I, I can't turn that price down. Like that's way too cheap in my opinion. So I got a Kelly Smith for 710. Hopefully we're selling her for 780, 790 here in the next day or so. And of course you got to watch for always the out of packs cards because some of those are still moving good too. Juliana Brandt is up. Garnacho after the Sterling SBC yesterday was not that good. He's going up in value. Kai Havertz is now 610. Harry Kane on the other side of things is still a bit low. Barcola loft his cheek at 276. He's still kind of hanging around. You just saw me flip a Frimpong. Um, this guy always gets low on bids. I bought him for 630,000 coins on a bid. Sold him for 690 just for a quick flip. Doku is still a little bit low. Uh, and I think there's plenty of fluctuations to be had with these cards. And then out of packs team of the weeks. Like I flipped the Rafinha yesterday and the Bremer. Those cards move a lot. Um, Verts is not low enough right now for me to buy. Messi was under 180 earlier. I think that, that um, Rodman's actually down just a little bit right now. Usman Dembele. So you can definitely look into some of these cards, even from the current team of the week. Last call if you want to pick up probably a Fede Valverde. He's probably going to go up a little bit in price today. But it's the rare stuff that you kind of have to be watching. And if you're going to trade it all at the moment, that's what I'll be trading. I can't believe that I actually... Just got a Kelly Smith on the video on a snipe like that. That's actually sick. But that's how I've been trying to find a lot of my icon deals recently is by searching up the 59th minute for the heroes and for the icons just to find cheaper players uh, or players at a deal price that I could then end up going and flipping after that. That's kind of how I've been trying to find a lot of deals at the moment. And I would recommend you guys go ahead and do that today as well. Now, if you're like Nate, I don't have a ton of coins. Here's what I'd tell you to do. Go look at some of the top tier gold cards that moved well yesterday too. Like I flipped Rudiger from 145 and sold him at 160. Now granted, that card had a shadow chemistry style on it, so it went for a little bit more. Rudiger's low again, man. If I could get this card for 140,000 coins with a shadow chem style or an anchor, I would totally buy it again because this is the type of card that could still rise back up a little bit today as a mid to top tier uh, gold card that a lot of people are still interested in. Quick shout here for uh, Puteus as well. I might try to pick up one of her just because uh, it is possible that she could get a team of the week. It's either going to be her or Pajor um, from Women's Barca Team Cooking once again. Another week with them probably getting an inform. Uh, and I don't think Pajor is going to get an inform after she just had one recently. So there's potential for that to be an out of packs investment if people are going out to pick that one up. Uh, Rafa Leal was like 430,000 coins yesterday. I know that the sprint boost meta is down, but like 401, like I'm going to have to try to, okay, I didn't get that one, but like 401, if I see another one of those pop, I'm probably just going to have to buy that because that's really, really cheap. And that'd be the only type of gold card that I'd be interested in trying to flip at the moment. Top tier, meta, rare, you guys know the vibes. Bon Mati is one of my favorites every week as well. She's kind of like right now 230,000 coins. She does go to about 250 usually. So if you get a snipe in the low 230s or under 230, that could be a good one. Again, I like the Rudiger. Uh, Kunde's down a good amount. Again, we just have to be careful with these gold cards because they're probably going to continue to move in ways that mean their prices 
don't go up a whole lot longer. But that's why we stick with the icons and the heroes to be safest there. Now let's talk Monday content today and not belabor the point at all. What upgrade pack are we going to be getting today? Because Total Rush cards are out. And yeah, you know, it'd be nice to have an opportunity to try to pack some of those from the upgrade packs. The 80 plus double or the booster pack, whatever it was called last week with 180 plus and then 175 plus inside of the pack. I would imagine that's the most likely type of pack that could be re-released today on this game. And I think it was what, like five rares or six rares and the rest common. So a little bit of a steep price, but not super crazy. There's probably not a whole lot else to cover with that, except that SBC. I would expect some sort of upgrade pack today, like almost a guarantee that we're getting some sort of upgrade pack today to at least give ourselves a shot at packing something decent from this Total Rush team. And then also, guys, actually the last two Mondays have given us live foot friendlies in objectives. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen this week, of course, because it's all about Rush and the Total Rush takeover, which again, it was confirmed yesterday that if you are playing in some of these modes trying to assist goals, which I know can be frustrating because now everybody's trying to pass instead of score goals. I'm going to be playing this most likely today on stream, trying to get some of these done. So that'll be a fun, hopefully, time. But I don't know if EA is going to drop another live foot friendly like the One Nation Glory or the Evo Arena as we have the rush objectives, kind of the main point of this promo. That's one thing that has been coming out in the last couple of Mondays, either Monday or Tuesday. I forget the day exactly, but I wanted to mention it because that's just something to check today. Last week, remember the One Nation Glory came out and a lot of those cheap cards from France, England, Spain went up in value. There's always a chance that EA could drop something like that and you see some cards move because of a gameplay demand. But since it's rush themed this week, I doubt there would be one of those. And then of course, guys, EA, I know we've been talking about Evos, and yesterday's Evo was not a good one. We've been getting a lot of Evos recently, so credit to EA for the content quantity that's been here. We've been getting a lot of them, again, like I mentioned, but I think we're due for another one of these Rush, Total Rush related. They've been talking about these themed Evos, right? We had a Slow It Down Evo. We had a Forward Fortification. I think we're going to get another one tomorrow because tomorrow as well if you're waiting to do these certain rush modes make sure you play today like i have to play today the slow it down mode because this mode is going to expire tomorrow on tuesday at the content drop so make sure you at least play one match to get that one done before it does dissolve and that would make this sb or this uh, evolution to get ito or this uh, objective that's the word i'm looking for like unobtainable if you didn't do it in time so make sure you go ahead and try to get that one done and don't miss out on that but maybe an evo today probably just a normal Monday of content. It wouldn't expect a whole lot. It could be a day if you find low prices, kind of like what I'm trying to find with some of these icons, heroes, other out of pack specials, maybe even one of the total rush cards that you want to try for your team should be a safer time to pick up a team at the moment to buy a couple of players, maybe even sit on them for a little bit and then use them in your team for the next couple of days. If you're playing rivals, you're going to make a push for a new division. You're going to play your qualifiers earlier, whatever it may be, should be a safer time for sure to go ahead and to look in some of that. This Harry Kane card at 640 is crazy compared to where he was before. That's just that is an absolutely mental price for that Harry Kane. He was 700,000 coins plus, and now he's 640K. Crazy, but should be a safer uh, time to be holding on to a team. Again, leaks could change that. You never know. Those are always impending danger, if you will, that we could get some crazy leaks and that could drop some prices. But if there's any of the new rush cards that you would like to try out, I would say look for low prices and fluctuations. Like some of them are even looking a bit low right now. I could see them rising out of... Uh, the early morning hours today into the midday and we'll just see if there's any surprises out there in terms of a content drop today on a Monday I'm not expecting a whole lot Mondays are usually quiet but maybe if you upgrade packs today we'll see if EA have some surprises for us and of course I'm gonna go chase my foot champs rewards which is ending here in a couple of hours gotta get a few more wins in and we'll open those rewards today on stream so that's the video for today guys to be completely honest hopefully EA spice it up but honestly we're just leaving after this whole entire weekend just kind of been it's been okay. It hasn't been amazing. The cards and packs are probably the highlight of everything, and they're pretty difficult to pack. A couple of decent SBCs, like we mentioned, but spice it up, EA. We do have the Alex Wobie SBC that's still lingering out there as well. Could be dropping. Again, it's a could. It's a maybe. It's not known for sure. But that's going to be the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Check out the second channel to catch up on all things related to the TFATG, and I will see you guys in the stream today. Have a great start to the week. Happy Monday. I'll see you in the stream today. It's been Nathan for Cannon. Catch you there. Peace. Out.